Hello everybody, this is Robert Douglas and I'm going to talk you through what Jam and I did on stage at the beginning of DrupalCon Denver because it was, um, it was a fun thing we did but um, not all of the technical detail came out during the presentation and I just wanted to show you how we went about it. So the, the purpose as we saw it of our presentation was to get across the idea that among other things, that Drupal is a really fun technology to be working with. So one of the first things we decided to do in our presentation to get this point across is we decided to give the presentation in Drupal as a Drupal site. So what we did is we put all the content into a Drupal site. And um, let me show you some of the content. You'll notice that uh, there are two content types. There's a main page and there's a mobile page. So let's take a, a look at a couple of these. So here's a main page. You can see that it's um, mostly just a picture. You can see at the bottom that it's in a book hierarchy. That's one of the main features of this content. Then let's take a look at a mobile page. So it's really sparse content, something really suitable for being on your slides. What we did is we made all this content and then we themed the book module output, the print uh, output in a way um, so that it takes the whole book hierarchy and it uses a library called JImpress to uh, make that into a presentation. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is just the type of Drupal content that I just showed you and it's in the the book export or the print view of this book hierarchy which is a, a core Drupal feature for the last several versions it's totally standard Drupal stuff and with the addition of the JMPress library then we get these nice transitions okay and at some point uh, we even started going in different directions spinning things around and the library can actually do uh, a lot more. So there you see it um, moved again. Take a look. Moved again on the depth axis, the z-axis, so it uh, zoomed in or zoomed out. So that's all really nice, and that's part of the JMPress library. So but let me show you um, how we actually did that inside of the, the content, because that's pretty interesting. So let's look at one of these main pages. Let's look at this medieval chant again and go into its edit mode. So all we've got going here is we've got this image. We've got uh, a title, which you never see. Um, got the image, that's what you do see. But then we've got all of these other fields on here, like uh, the data X, data Y, the data scale, the data rotation, and those are the parameters that get sent to the JMPress library to show you exactly how the presentation is supposed to go. And then one other thing I want to show you here is that we've got this entity reference to a mobile page. Now remember I told you that we have uh, main pages, those are what got on, shown on the main screen, and mobile pages, um, I haven't talked about that yet, but what we did at some point is we started uh, making it so that everybody in the audience who had their mobile phone or their laptop or their iPad would have a, a separate slide or page or content from the Drupal site that um, they would be seeing that complemented or uh, enhanced what they were seeing on the main screen. And as you can see, you could uh, just choose which of the mobile pages uh, this particular main page was supposed to be referencing. So let's let's take a look at how that works. So I'm going to minimize this browser a little bit, and then I'm going to go get um, this browser. Now, at this point in the in the presentation, we said normally, when you're in a presentation, uh, they ask you to turn your cell phones off to not disturb the presentation, but we're going to do something different. We're going to have you turn your phones on, your laptops on, your iPads on, because you're going to use them. And then we sent them to this page here, or to this website here, jrob.tv. Now, since, since then, I've shut this site down, and I'm running this on localhost. Okay, so this, this is essentially where things would have begun. 
So this is on the main screen, and this is what somebody would have seen if they had gotten out their iPhone uh, or their iPad or their Android phone and gone to jrob.tv at the moment. Now, in the presentation, we were a little um, held back by the capabilities of the Wi-Fi in the venue. Uh, so not everybody had this experience quite equally or at all, but a lot of people did. Um, I've got evidence that we had at least 200 people in the room who were following along with us and able to see things. So now watch what happens. Now the blue thing's on the main screen, remember. Watch what happens when I advance. So you notice how the mobile presentation over here also advanced. See, I can go back and forth between these slides and it will show you different things. So at one point we did something really cool. Um, we've got the we we put up this tag cloud screen and if you were there in the presentation this is where I had a little technical snafu and had to do some live editing and debugging everybody in the audience got this form that they could fill out and I asked them to present some of the things that they were interested in so they could say that they had come here to learn Drupal or they had come here to learn about responsive design um, and everything that they put into the form then showed up as a tag cloud. And the more people that said Drupal or HTML5 or whatever, that made that tag bigger and uh, redder. So I'll, I'll show you how that boosts the size a little bit there. If I put HTML5 in again, and, and essentially as, as many tags as people put in, the, tra the tag cloud kept getting bigger. So I'm just putting nonsense in now. And eventually we had a tag cloud that was really big like that. Okay, that was cool. And then we went on to this exercise where I told people that I was going to send them a text to their device and that the exercise was to proofread the text uh, or rather a specific form of proofreading it to count the letter I and this was an example of how important it is to have a lot of contributors to the Drupal project so I, I sent them this text and uh, they were supposed to start you know one two three four five six seven eight and go on until they had uh, counted the number of the letter I and then they put in their answer now if I open up another window put in a different answer you'll see uh, everybody's answer updates the graph over here uh, let's just put one more in so here we have um, five people who had answered and uh, you can see that uh, the graph shows what their answer was here and how many people chose it. We had uh, several hundred people give answers here and uh, 25 was the right answer. I, when I uh, finally revealed the answer then you'll notice it highlighted the answer here and it highlighted all of the eyes here and the funny thing that st happened is that people then went and updated their answer to the correct thing and all of a sudden most of the people then had the right answer. So the, the cool thing is that these are people on their telephones and they're giving back a form submission in real time and the results are coming in on the screen in front of everybody as they're watching. So it, it, it opens up a lot of possibilities for interactive presentations where you're getting a level of information that wouldn't be possible otherwise. So that was a cool game, and I, of course I said, well, if it takes that many people to count the letter I in this little bit of documentation, then imagine how many people it takes to write good code and write good documentation, etc. And then we finally ended up on this screen, which is a, a mixing board that I made in, uh, with the jQuery slider, and everybody in the audience had this screen initially on their phone, and they were... Uh, supposed to pick a voice. So let's see, we'll pick a blue, a red, a green, there it is, orange. So we had these uh, 
Everybody in, in the audience was supposed to have this drone going on that was supposed to set the mood for a chant that we had told them we were going to do. Now, um, we were in this demonstration particularly constrained by bandwidth, and I don't think everybody got their chant voice going really quickly, or at all in some cases. In any case, I made it so that uh, when I changed one of the um, values on the slider, you'll hear that the, the sound that's being played changes and the chant evolves over time. Now, of course, for the people who were there, you know that at some point um, people started chanting and singing and we were actually performing the Book of Druplicon by Earl Miles over the, over the sounds that were coming out. And I had some uh, drones that were coming out from on the stage as well. And I was able to change the volume on those. like that. Very nice. And then everybody's uh, browser said thank you. And then we said one more thing. Uh, everybody got this link. There's just one more thing. And when you clicked it, then you were supposed to get Rickrolled, which of course isn't available in Germany, but we weren't in Germany at the time. So um, in all, it was, a, it was a good presentation. We, were, we stumbled upon some technical things, but a lot of the ideas hopefully did come out. And in the blog post that I'm writing right now, it gives you all of the code that we used, uh, the entire Drupal site, everything with the music files, everything, pictures, everything that you need to be able to set this up yourself. And hopefully somebody will take the ball and run with it and develop this into something really, really cool. There you go.